Now, since most people don't get to ever see a harp in real life, well, that's not necessarily true. Sometimes you get to see them in restaurants, and sometimes you get to see them at weddings. But rarely do people actually ever go up to the harpist and talk to them. So, for most people, what they know about the harp is what they find through religion and cartoons. And oddly enough, through cartoons, it's the same thing. It's just a cartoon reference to religion. Certain cartoons, when I was a kid, was famous for using angels and harps, little tiny cherubs, or when a character died and he'd float up to heaven, he'd always be playing a harp. And these are all religious references. The thing is, though, we're not really quite sure when the harp got so closely associated with religion and angels. One could venture to guess that, or one theory really, is that because the harp grew in popularity in the 15th century, when religion was so high and so powerful and so part of the culture, and that there are references in the Bible to angels having these great bands and making all this music, and then you add the simple fact that the harp, well, it kind of does sound angelic. Yeah, it kind of does. So, the natural inclination for anyone would be to associate the thing that is most powerful in your culture with something that sounds so beautiful. And ever since then, they've been popping up all over the place. Angels, cherubs, cartoons, little tiny figurines, we're everywhere. But you also get it associated with fairies. And this is kind of a new reference, but they get a magical power when associated with fairies. And you know what? I kind of think that's right on. <laughs>